Well, the church is on a trip out west this week, so we're filming in Lake Galilee, Queensland, <laughs> not Lake Galilee in Israel. And uh, so anyway, that's super cool. And we're up to the first letter to the Corinthians. Corinth was one of the more interesting places that Paul went. And uh, Corinth kind of was a double seaport town. There were two ports that were about seven miles apart and Corinth was kind of in between. And um, it was shorter for ships to come into one port, move all the goods across the seven miles and load them onto a second ship. That was quicker than going around the giant Archaean Peninsula. So because of this double seaport thing, the most amount of interesting people came and went through Corinth and the church itself was a real gathering of different people. Anyway, that's the church to Corinth and we're about to read 1 Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Christ Jesus to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's house have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One says, I follow Paul. Another says, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. And still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say you were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us the wisdom of God. That is our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, 
boast in the Lord. Well, Paul was in Ephesus at the time he wrote this letter. Ephesus is across the Adriatic Sea. I think it's the Adriatic Sea from Greece. It's in Asia Minor, which is a part of Turkey today. So Paul's in Turkey and he gets, uh, Chloe comes or someone from Chloe's house comes to visit him, bringing news from the church in Corinth. Now he started that church in Corinth like a few years before uh, or a year, even just a year or two before. And he gets news from Chloe, but Chloe's household also brings a letter from the church. So this first letter to the Corinthians, and we're going to find out later, it's not the first letter, it's the second letter, because there's an earlier letter than this that we don't have. And we find out when we get to 1 Corinthians 5, that he says, in the earlier letter that I wrote, so we realize there's an even earlier one. So this is called 1 Corinthians because it's the first one we have. <laughs> it's actually probably the second one, and 2 Corinthians is probably the third one. But, but Paul, you know, is in Ephesus. He gets news from traveler, you know, someone from Chloe's house, who we don't know who Chloe is, but someone from her house comes, brings news, but also brings a letter from the church. And in this letter, they've got questions. And later on, Paul's gonna answer some of those questions, but he finds out they're just not getting along in this church at Corinth. There are divisions and quarrels. One person says, I am a follower of Paul. Another says, I'm a follower of Apollos. Another says, I'm a follower of Cephas. Now that's Peter. Peter, um, you know, Simon Peter, his other name is Cephas. He's got a few names. And then some people say, well, oh no, I, I just follow Jesus. <laughs> it's it's funny because we've got denominations, you know, um, that all focus on a certain person. You know, it's like the Lutherans follow Luther and, you know, the Methodists, oh, we follow Wesley. And, uh, you know, there's those who follow Calvin, all the reformed thinkers. And so we have our favorites. And then there are those who say, oh, no, no, I just follow Christ. <laughs> so we, we even do a bit of that today ourselves. But Paul says, was I crucified for you? You know, is there anything special about me uh, or any of these people? You know, we're all just pointing to Jesus. And that's the case. Luther was pointing at Christ. Wesley and Calvin and John Knox and, you know, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury and any number of famous people through history, they're pointing at Thomas Aquinas. They're pointing at Christ. and. Technically, I was talking with a Lutheran pastor recently. I've got friends who are Lutherans. And I said, you know what? I think I'm a Lutheran. <laughs> I'm not a Lutheran in the sense that I'm a member of the Lutheran church, but in the sense that I recognize that Martin Luther wasn't. He was a gift from God to all Christians, including Catholics. And John Knox, you know, Presbyterian, he's a gift to all Christians not just Presbyterians, you know, like God sends these people along to be a blessing to all of us. So the Corinthians, you know, Peter and Apollos and Paul, the Lord sent them all along to be a blessing to Corinth. But for us, the Lord has sent along all these preachers, you know, like Spurgeon and Whitfield and Finney and, and uh, <laughs> the list goes on, you know, uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones and modern preachers, you know, there are preachers in the world today, people like Tom Wright who've written books and it doesn't mean everything everyone says is perfect, but there's a grace that they carry and they point us all towards Jesus and that's just the best thing. And then Paul goes on to say that the wisdom of Christ or the, the wisdom of Christ is like foolishness to people. The wisdom of the cross is like foolishness. In Roman society, to be crucified was the most humiliating, uh, it's, it was, it was su such a low act. We look at it as like just a terrible, painful way to die, but it, it was definitely that, but it was more than that. It was also shameful and humiliating. Um, it, it's hard to kind of think up something that's, equivalently shameful in modern society. And I haven't been able to come up with one, but um, you imagine how ashamed you'd be if suddenly you're on national TV and someone pulled your pants down or something, you'd be ashamed. Well, that's 
it's, it's shameful, but being crucified is, is multiple times more shameful. It's so shameful that they would even crucify people after they were dead, they would then crucify them to kind of add the shame onto their family. But the Lord, Paul writes in this letter and says that the, the crucifixion or the cross of Christ is God's wisdom. It's foolishness to Romans. They look at Jesus crucified and they think, oh, it's just, he's just a fool. There's a graffiti artwork found um, in the second century. And it was a, a guy, the, the artwork was of a donkey crucified to a cross and a man bowing down and worshiping. And it said underneath, it says, pub, whatever the servant guy's name was, so-and-so worships his God. What they were basically saying was that Jesus was a donkey. They were making fun of Jesus in that graffiti. Well, that shows you how shameful it was to people that you know anyone who's crucified can't possibly be a God. And so the Christian way of thinking was just like idiocy, it was dumb. And Paul knows it, but he says, yet it might be foolish to them, but it's the wisdom of God and it's the strength of God and it's the power of God. And um, <laughs> if we could get that into us, we would find such grace and victory and overcoming in our own lives. So Paul says at the end of this chapter, he says, not many of you were noble. Not many of you were wise by this world's standards, but the Lord has chosen you. In the same way the Lord chose this weird way to die, the Lord's also chosen people you wouldn't expect to. And if you're thinking you're not all that special, that'd be why the Lord has chosen you because through you, he will do special things. Lord, I thank you for this chapter. I ask you to bless it and commend it to everyone who listens. And Lord, use us for your purposes, even though we are weak ourselves. Amen.